Yes, thank you for this question. One of the major achievements of uh, this project is to show the possibility of a close collaboration among uh, amyloidosis center, international amyloidosis center. This led to uh, extraordinary results of more than 2,000 uh, patients enrolled in this important study. And probably in the upcoming months, we will see uh, more patients enrolled. And as reported by Dr. Castritis uh, yesterday, there is unfortunately still the need for a better knowledge about the disease. Unfortunately, uh, most of the patients also in the last court of the study are diagnosed late when the organ damage is really advanced. Also in our perspective, in the prospective study uh, run by the Italian Medicine Agency in patients with, uh, uh, treated with bortezomib, there is um, also in this case uh, patients in the really advanced stage of the disease like diagnosis. So this is one of the main results of, the, uh, of those studies. So uh, before 2010, uh, oral melphalan and dexamethasone was the standard of care for patients with AL amyloidosis. The best achievement of adding bortezomib to alkylators was the improvement of the rate and the quality of hematologic response. Importantly, a few weeks ago, a um, few months ago, uh, was published on the Journal of Clinical Oncology the final results of the first phase three study in patients with hyalemeloidosis. In these studies, we compare the use of uh, the standard of care melphalan and dexamethasone versus bortezomib melphalan and dexamethasone. And in this study, the addiction of uh, bortezomib to the standard of care resulted in an um, improvement in terms of uh, uh, hematologic response that reached almost 80%. And uh, importantly, this regimen was associated with a significant improvement in overall survival. So the addiction of uh, alkylating agents such as cyber d cyclophosphamide should be considered as an, an important game changer in this disease. So we have to say that bortezomib combinations are the mainstay of uh, treatment for newly diagnosed yellow amyloidosis patients. And again, as I said before, the, uh, after the results of the uh, phase three study on JCO, we might consider bortezomib, melphalan, and dexamethasone as the, as the new standard of care. This should be a combination very effective and relatively inexpensive. Unfortunately, um, melphalan, the use of oral melphalan is associated with limitations due to, in particular, for those patients with the kidney failure and for um, those with non permanent contraindication to autologous sense and transplant. So, bortezomib and dexamethasone should be considered the standard of care for patients non candidate for uh, autologous stents and transplant, and Cyborg D should be considered the best option in all the other patients. And yes, in the, this drug, this combination is now one of the most used across Europe. early diagnosis is still an adamant need for AL amyloidosis patient. This is a big problem. And I think that uh, the um, important step forward is the awareness about the disease. And I'm really happy uh, because the uh, educational program of the ACH meeting this year decided to have a talk about the management of AL amyloidosis and also about other monoclonal gammopathy of clinical significance. This is a really important point because the awareness of hematologists is fundamental in order to reduce the time from the first suspicion to the final diagnosis. 
The second step is to increase the awareness of cardiologists and nephrologists because those specialists are uh, usually the first physicians that have to make the suspicion in patients with amyloidosis. One of the ways to reduce uh, the time from uh, the uh, clinical um, suspicion to get to, to have a um, nearly diagnosis is to, to increase awareness and secondly to screen for those patients with um, high risk of amyloidosis as we do in our center. In the, our hematology department, we uh, collected biomarkers for uh, cardiac damage, such as NT pro BNP, in all patients with monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance and uh, an abnormal free light chain kappa lambda ratio. In this way, we identified patients with a, a really early diagnosis with no organ damage with a pre symptomatic stages. The median time to get the final diagnosis is still uh, too high. And also the Mayo researcher reported this in a um, publication a few years ago, showing uh, that more than 10 months from the identification of the monoclonal gammopathy could, could be a median time from diagnosis, so still too long. One of the major achievements of this project, again, is uh, to, see, to, to, to see the close collaboration among experts in the field of amyloidosis. We know that it's a rare disease, but we uh, collaborate a lot in the field of amyloidosis, and this is really important in order to, um, to find an important point for our uh, patients. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the researchers that took the time to fill the survey also in this uh, um, difficult time uh, of the COVID pandemic. I think uh, that one of the major results of the, this first analysis was to show that the severity and the mortality rate of the SARS-CoV-2 infection is in the range of the general population, but uh, we mm, have to wait uh, the uh, final results and the analysis. And also, I have to say that unfortunately, in the last uh, few weeks, uh, we have a huge increase in the numbers of patients um, that um, were, were diagnosed due to the second European wave of COVID-19. So thank you for collaborating this project and we will see the final results uh, soon, hopefully.